the New Age Dark Age? Is the New Age movement the new Dark Age? What's that bandaid on your arm for? Someone asked at yoga on the bluffs in Long Beach today. Uh, I just got vaccinated, I answered. And holy shit, you would have thought I had just killed someone by the gasps in the crowd. I get it. The new age scene is not into vaccines or Western medicine in general. But can we at least have a rational discussion? I was immediately educated on the conspiring nature of Big Pharma and the profits made from vaccines, as well as the alleged cover-ups of anti-vaccine research. My dear friends, I proclaim to the riotous yoga gods and goddesses, I am very well versed in Dell Big Tree, RFK Jr., the testimonials from various celebrities and all the documentaries on vaccines out there. But can we at least have a scientific discussion? You know what I don't get about people that get vaccinated? Why do they care about unvaccinated people? Someone asked. Well, I'm not an immunologist, but my understanding is that there's a herd immunity and immunosuppressed people like babies, AIDS and cancer patients, and the elderly are much more susceptible to infectious diseases like the flu and measles than the average person, I answer. Yes, I do occasionally talk like a doctor when I'm not dropping Tupac lyrics and shit. The topic then shifted to nutrition as a panacea. Then everyone walked away from me like I was a leper. No one even asked what kind of vaccine I got. Hepatitis B, by the way, that's kind of important for healthcare workers. Takeaway notes here. No one learned anything. Everyone left angry. And the aura one gets from an hour of yoga at sunset was immediately lost. Oh. If you are like me, you have a bunch of friends who are into alternative medicine, alternative lifestyles, alternative religions, and other hippie stuff. Hey, I'm half hippie myself, so I can say this. The other half is gangsta. I knew you were wondering. You know what I'm talking about? Meditations, magic crystals, tarot cards, astrology, numerology, horoscopes, flat earth. Yes, some are into astrology and flat earth dome theory at the same time. Anti-vaccination, chakras, CBDs, and or turmeric elixirs as a cure-all. Manifesting to the universe. Not religious, but spiritual. Love and light, the Akashic records, third eyes, copper wiring, Palo Santo with maybe a splash of Illuminati reptilian conspiracy theories and more than a splash of ayahuasca, DMT, and other psychedelics, preferably vegan, non-GMO, and gluten-free. Now, where is all this coming from? Westerners have been fascinated with the East forever, but surely the colonization of India by the British was a major influence. In more recent times, we can even look to the Beatles as post-World War II enchantment of Indian culture reached new heights. Like the workers and the natural resources previously exploited, the West scooped up the best of Hinduism and Buddhism and made their own concoction, the New Age, or perhaps more accurately called Neo-Hindu Buddhism. So what is the problem? What if the hippies just want to believe in magic and run around naked? Why am I being such a downer? Hey, I'm all for it. I'll join in. I've been to Burning Man eight times. I know what's up. But who is going to run the operating rooms? Who is going to design 747 jets? The real ones. Not that dilapidated one at Burning Man. Who is going to send new global positioning system satellites into orbit? Look around you. Unless you're in a yurt in Costa Rica, nearly everything around you has been developed by fastidious scientists. The floors, walls, and the roof of the room you're in right now. Carefully crafted chemical compositions to make the plaster, steel, bricks, concrete, glass, screws, nails, and everything else. There is no room for second place. Your room is either upright or your building is collapsing. My worry is that we are going back to a time before the scientific method, before peer-reviewed, randomized, double-blinded perspective trials. We are going back to a time where anecdotal evidence, which currently has very low scientific value, was king. A time where someone could just pop up from the desert and say he received divine inspiration from a burning bush or turned water into wine. Let me emphasize this point. Saying your friend's cousin was cured of cancer by going vegan means almost nothing. What kind of cancer? What other medical problems does this person have? 
What else do they do during that time? If they moved to a new apartment during that time, maybe the new apartment cured cancer. Hashtag confounding factors. I've even had flat earthers tell me that Aristotle's discoveries about the earth being spherical due to the way the earth shadows on the moon during an eclipse, Copernicus and Galileo's heliocentric models of the earth revolving around the sun, Einstein's theory of relativity, and more are all fake. Just a fake record in the history books, a government conspiracy to brainwash us. Galileo would be relieved to learn that his years in prison and house arrest for defying the Pope were fake. Not to mention Giordano Bruno being burned at the stake for proposing the stars were distant suns surrounded by their own planets and insisting that the universe is infinite. Hashtag pantheism. In fact, there is a long list of scientists executed by various Christian churches. Are we going back to that? And burning witches too, why not? So who am I to say science is not just another wacky religion? Some even call it scientism. By the way, the Church of Scientology and Christian Science have nothing to do with this. Or do they? Or maybe science is just a philosophy. Really? Philosophers don't invent cell phones and flat screen TVs. The major difference between science and any philosophy or religion is the ability to produce verifiable and duplicable results. That's why cold fusion is a dud. That is the whole point of the scientific method, which consists of observations, measurements, experiments, and the formulation, testing, and modification of a hypothesis. Whereas religion or spirituality rely on faith, believing in something that cannot be explained through science. Why do I feel like while I was learning all this in high school biology, chemistry, and physics, the skaters and surfers who were dodging class and smoking weed with the hot girls in the student parking lot are now the new age gurus and the arrogance. Science is ultimately a humbling experience. Whatever you come up with now will likely be modified in some way in the future. But to proclaim with pure confidence that your elixir will cure everything just because you got a sacred tattoo is next level. And any train station in India has a bogus guru selling cure-all snake oils. Hashtag Osho. I looked up pseudoscience and found this. Quote, fixed ideas. No peer review. Selects only favorable discoveries. Sees criticism as conspiracy. Non-repeatable results. Claims of widespread usefulness. And ballpark measurements. End quote. That's pretty much every healer in Santa Monica I know. Just a refresher on what the Dark Ages was, commonly referred to as the Middle Ages. It was that time from around 500 AD to about 1500 AD, that is, after the ancient Greeks and before the Renaissance and the Age of Enlightenment. It describes a time of, quote, demographic, cultural, and economic deterioration that occurred in Western Europe following the decline of the Roman Empire, end quote. And we are being compared to the Roman Empire quite often these days. So maybe we're due for another trip to the Dark Ages. Quote, During the Age of Enlightenment, many critical thinkers saw religion as antithetical to reason. For them, the Middle Ages, or Age of Faith, was therefore the opposite of the Age of Reason. End quote. But the New Age isn't religious. It's spiritual. Numerology is to mathematics what astrology is to astronomy a cursory reading of only one chapter of an entire textbook of knowledge. Okay, I bagged on the hippies enough. And even though the New Age scene lacks scientific dogma, their hearts are in the right place. All of their concerns come from a place of love, a place of concern for their fellow sentient beings. Can scientists make the same claim? Now that's a laugh. From the beginning of mankind, science has been co-opted by people striving for power and domination over others. Surely, during caveman times, the first slingshot was invented as a male distribution device until some troglodyte decided to put a rock in there and the arms race was on. But seriously, science is fully entwined with the evolution of weapons, from lead to muskets to rifles to bullets and machine guns, and finally, finally, the nuclear bomb. Sure, sure, there's always some terrible enemy that justifies scientists working for their government to make the weapons to kill people. 
Then there are oil spills, nuclear meltdowns, toxic gases, plastic islands in the ocean, and dozens of other examples of how misguided scientific technology is destroying the earth. I'm not going to go on a vegan rant here, but the animal agriculture industry is one big shit show, literally. And I don't see too many scientists or doctors giving a damn about all these pigs, cows, chicken, and fishies that get ground up into edible shapes or whatever. Chickens don't have fingers. There is a major flaw in Western science, but it's not fake medicine, nor even the side effects. We rarely get scientific data back on a medication that is already out on the market that shows it does not work. Those meds usually get eliminated in early clinical trials. And even though some meds end up having unplanned side effects, those are discovered and dealt with, either by removing them from the market or changing their indications and warning labels. But these are not typically fraudulent activities. The major flaw is how the decision is made to choose a new medicine. By far, pharmaceutical companies design medications that can make them the most profit. Then billions of dollars are spent designing a novel medicine to achieve those ends. Note that it must be a novel medicine for the company to be able to patent it and make 10 years of massive revenue off of it. No one makes money off of researching the possible health benefits of avocados, for example. I love avocados and they're healthy. So we've gone from the era of evidence-based medicine, which is technically still accurate, to the era of profit-based medicine. Profit-based medicine is the major flaw of the Western healthcare system. So are we falling back into the dark ages, or is it the dawning of the age of Aquarius? The yin-yang symbol. Ironically, a symbol from ancient Chinese philosophy might be the answer we were looking for. It describes, quote, how seemingly opposite or contrary forces may actually be complementary, interconnected, and interdependent, end quote. The East and the West, acupuncture and IVs, the New Age and the scientific method. After reviewing all my experiences in both worlds, my gut feeling is that a thriving world would have this balance close to 50-50. That's the key. Sure, sure, everyone will say this makes sense, but they are probably more like 80 to 20 in one direction or the other. Many MDs make fun of Ayurvedic medicine and chiropractic medicine but really don't know much about them, including myself. Just as so many alternative healers don't realize how weak anecdotal evidence is. Let's learn from each other. Let's close the gap. Why aren't we studying avocados? Why aren't we using evidence-based natural healing medicine? Yes, nutrition is a critical element of prevention and healing, but it will not cure an ICU patient on the ventilator with sepsis and a myocardial infarction. Perhaps Eastern medicine is more beneficial for prevention during early life and Western medicine for more complex treatments towards the end of one's life. So anyways, I'll see you guys at yoga tomorrow. Let us all bring humility, peace and love, vegan cookies, and yes, insulin for type 1 diabetics. Sincerely, DJ Ass Maggots, a.k.a. Dr. Z.